Texas. Like, I appreciate people the way they do the shit the way they want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't feel like you got to conform. Okay. Yeah. lovely people it's your girl ricky and welcome to another episode of becoming a dot 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 podcast it's the new year new me all that good stuff i'm here becoming a better what me becoming more enlightened more evolved more what i don't know i don't know i really don't i'm just trying to figure it out that's just becoming. Like trying to figure it out <laughs> right that's I'm what becoming you. is is figuring it out and also, I'm being joined by, as you can see, <laughs> I have a guest with me. His name is Tech. So you might as well just go ahead and introduce yourself since you just going to come cut in on my intro. Oh, my bad. I thought it was a team effort. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. My bad. Okay, yes, I am the guest <laughs> on the Becoming Podcast. It's an honor to be here. My name is Tech. I am the... Uh, owner and operator of Tech Life Productions. It's my production company, and we produce a lot of different things. Like? Weddings, small commercials. Uh, documentaries is the direction that we are headed in going forward. So that's going to be the all pretty much going forward. It's, but everything that we shoot is like with a documentative feel. So we try to do the best we can to tell a good story with like everything. And when I say we, it's really just me and then whoever I can get to be on a crew so it's like I, you know this no it's, it's, it's i me. understand that i always say we and i'm like it's just me i am we. i am me <laughs> have you seen okay let me fast forward real quick have you okay. seen uh insecure when she was like hold on let me put the such and such person on the phone she was like hello it's me. <laughs> have you have you seen that shit yeah. oh bro that's yeah that's me right there i'm like <laughs> editor on the phone maybe yeah. the same person <laughs> look let me tell you something insecure is life like actually let's go let's take it back uh awkward black girl oh the the web series yeah yes and, like, and i didn't learn about that until insecure so i had to go back and oh like, yeah i'm bad about like knowing everything that's going mm-hmm. on like live so i i i wasn't really that big into youtube okay um you know around when it first came out i was st- everybody still trying to learn what it is what you do on there so um and that's when I got into film around like uh I graduated in 2011 so I was getting more into film around 2005 when I went to school and stuff for radio tv broadcasting and so that's how I found Issa Rae like I was like oh she's doing a short okay let me see what this is about and then I was like this is very I'm in my car and we're gonna just film I had an ideal and I was like I like it let's watch it and I watched the whole series and that's how I learned about uh what's his name D- D- uh, D- uh Donald Glover um being oh, yeah. a rapper when Atlanta. he was on there yeah when he was on Atlanta. there yeah she was on I forgot that she was on there uh, but no she was on her show on Awkward Black Girl did not know that yeah, so that's I never how I learned. finished it. I only watched like that first. I tried to, you know, and then you know how sometimes you can't really go back after you've seen certain things. It's like ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I say take it, go back and watch it because it's it's a good show. Um, Going back, go take it back, back in the day, way back. Because I mean, because you can under appreciate how far she has come, like from awkward black girl to insecure to all these other shows that she has going on it's just like i i admire her and i want to work with her at the same time i mean you already said it now now as you said it you've spoken it into existence so it's shall i mean i did get to be in the zoom chat with her uh last really? year yeah i w- i'm in this um girls uh screenwriters group on facebook that's tight and um they had this opportunity where you could be in on all the producers and people who did insecure 
And I was lucky enough to see that post and I was like, sign me up. And I was like, ah, she, I don't, she doesn't know who I am and she can't see me, but. But I'm in here. I'm in here. Like I actually, like I get to see Easter in the group, In the chat. In the chat, man. So that was, uh, that was a dream come true. So, you know, it's just, and she's on my vision board too. Congratulations. She was on my vision board. So as one step closer to, you know, working with Issa Rae. Congratulations, man. It's like, I feel like you already won the Academy Award just by just by <laughs> getting to know her. Have you, do you, is that like something that you aspire to do is when like, you know, win awards and stuff like that for your films or is it more just about creating the product? So for me, I mean, we had this joke in um, film school that um, when we uh, get our Oscar, we're going to be like, hey, we're A certified, you know, because we got an award. But I really want people just to enjoy what I put out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people enjoy it, if I win an award or not, I just want the people to, to feel something from what I do. And nice. if they like it, that's what matters, you right. know? Because a lot of... A lot of people don't, it's so much political in all that stuff anyway. So I just like, if the people enjoy it, that's what matters. I mean, look at Tyler Perry. He done came a long way and people love it. And that's how he got to where he is now because yeah. old black ladies in church <laughs> was right. bootlegging the hell out of him. Right, plays <laughs> and, and going to church on every show right. and shooting people. I hate hey, this pistol because the Lord says so. And you know, black women love church plays. Come on now, if you can't get the church people, yeah, come on, come on now. And it eventually took to the white folks too, man. They ended up loving it, like exactly. That's who was coming to the thing. Like I used to work at the movie theater uh, a lot of the part of my life, and that's all I really saw after a while. I'm not saying the black folks weren't coming. But mm. it was definitely like a, a healthy mix of people that were in the theaters checking out his work. Yeah, they love they love Medea so much. So it's like you know, they do. They love it. And look at him now. So I I love looking at people like Issa and Tyler. You know, coming from nothing into like something. Blow, blow it up. Blow it up. Blowing up. So I mean, so what are your what's what do you expire? What is your goal for this year for your production or being in the industry? What's what's your main goal for this year? Uh my main goal this year is to refine my craft to a point to where you do stuff so well that you can't get it wrong. You know what I mean? Like it's just always all right. It's always right to your to your acceptance level and then just finally getting recognition and being known for like what I do because mm. like you and I met on set working on a uh, working on a production like that's the backstory behind us and then you know you told me about your show and then now I'm here finally and I made it <laughs> but like <Yay>. so <laughs> yes but that show we worked on it felt like you and I both weren't really getting noticed for our true talents what we really could do you know what I mean like you know we were, we were production assistants that's cool and then eventually I got moved into a different position but it was like I had to keep putting myself around the folks that I wanted mm -hmm. to be around and that's kind of like the cool part about the film industry is that you have to just showcase your ability with actions like you say a little you say a couple of little things if you're fortunate enough to even say anything because most of the time they're like oh great you're going to be getting us coffee and then you're just getting coffee for six weeks and and if you're not right. careful that's all you'll be doing is getting mm -hmm. coffee for six weeks you got to find like a creative way to like say what you want to do and try not to be too overbearing and then we had to deal with like hierarchy and people's people's family members and shit like that that like had stuff and we had to work through that like well, that's what I had that's what I experienced personally but it was cool you know it just was what it was after a while it was a good opportunity but I can't say that that's the same area I want to be in as far as like production like what I want to do right I want to do film and like maybe like television shows and like documentaries more than reality. No, I, I feel you on that. Um, I, I like to do every aspect of 
uh film just to see what I like. Do I like you know yeah, documentary? That's what Do I like TV sitcom? Do I like reality? And that was my first big reality show. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, well, no, I've done a reality show before, but I was in a different position. Yeah. And so that was different from this one going 24 seven and that one be like, okay, we're filming for four days. We take two day break and we come back and film the rest of the episode. So it was more like that instead of doing. I like that better. I like the shoots where it's like a week, not yeah. 10 weeks. But if it was up to me, I'd be behind the camera or by the camera, like mm-hmm. AC or AC. AC camera op or or even DP like I want to be in that position okay instead of being like a PA because PA is like cool but it's like it's good it's good for you to get on the set yeah that way yeah. you can kind of see how stuff is being done learn the different right. positions that's what's really cool about it but then it's like it gets old fast because you know you want more you know you want more from set from yourself mm-hmm. unless Unless that was your goal, was just to be a PA your whole life. I don't, I don't know too many people like that that will just continue to just do that. And so, like, once you meet people, it's really important that you start networking once you get on a set ASAP. Like, texting people back and then letting them know what you can do. Sometimes even sending them your work if they'll be willing to look at it. But yeah. sometimes all you got to do is just send it because there ain't nothing to, for them to forward it to somebody else that feels like messing with it or they're looking for people that do stuff. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean... I talk to people on set and of course we talked, that's how we met. Yeah, and, well, yeah. you came, and and you moved up um, not too long after that. So it's just, you know, Hey, what are you doing? Sure. Oh, and, and if they, that person will let you in, cause it's all gotta be, if that person's willing to, bro. yeah, you know, and I hope, and there's some people that were willing to show me some things while I was yeah. on set. So I really appreciate that. You showed me a lot. Fine too and I appreciate you for that and then I love the crew because everybody was just like especially as PAs we was just like hey let's help each other out you know we just had we had a good time yeah we yeah we ended up yeah we had to have a good time (laughs) it was getting a little crazy some of some of that stuff I was like bro what's going on yeah I'll be gone for a day I'll be like ooh, y'all tell me what happened while I was gone (laughs) And then, like, we had the little group chat thing, so you could, oh, like, yeah. could read what was happening, like, mm-hmm. whenever people would do stuff or whatever, like, uh oh, man, it was, it was a time, man, it was, it was a long six weeks. Yeah, so it was, a, it was fun, though, like, when we had, you know, when all of us was around each other, we just, like, man, what's going on? You saw that, be texting, okay, what up? Bruh. So, so. <laughs> Sending pictures and stuff, like, look at this, look at this, you see what they're doing over there, look at this. But that's one thing I love about being on certain sets because this was my first time having that many black people on a set. This is true. I can now that part, yeah, that's for sure. It was so many of us. I know, and that was my because sometimes the I remember when I got my first gig, I was the only black person and the only black female because I Mm. I hardly see any black female um, PAs that you know on certain things that I've been on like sometimes it'll be me or sometimes it might be one other but this is the most time like this even productions coordinators oh my god like I was like oh wow this is the first time this has been this many black people what What would you say was your peak of that production I mean, they gave me more responsibility t- t- towards the end. I think I feel like, like yeah. you know, being able to drive cast around, um, trusting me to go drop off equipment and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> you know. So I was like, okay, they trust me. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. I was like, okay. And, you know, for me, I'm just like, I'm trying to learn everything. I'm just like, okay, what do you need me to do next? I'm the type of person, like, I don't like to sit still. I got to keep moving. <laughs> yeah, bro. You'll fall asleep. That's how, that's how it got to be for me after a while. Like some of the stuff they had me doing, I, I'm, I'm like you, like, give me something that we're going to be actively working on. Mm-hmm. So that way, like my time, I feel like my time is being better accounted for instead of just being here all day. Cause it's yeah. like, if I would have just been here all day, I could have been back at the crib doing stuff. But the opportunity is everything, though. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, 
I I had fun um, and, you know, just being behind the scenes. And I've always been a behind the scenes kind of girl. Like yeah. any film or TV show or something I watch on, like, I want to, you know, they had the behind the scenes. You remember when they had DVDs and you like behind yeah, the scenes man. of it? That's all, all I wanted stuff. to watch. <laughs> that's the that's the best stuff. It's like how the story is being told. Yes, you know? I love all of that. So I I really appreciate it all of that so what do you um what 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 is your ultimate goal you want to have your production company you want to come out with a whole film about a certain topic anything like that my ultimate one of my ultimate goals is to become like you know how kind of like how how Christopher Nolan is known for being Christopher Nolan Mm -hmm. with and he has like signature movements that he does in his stuff Mm-hmm. I want to become like that, but with documentaries and telling stories. Okay. And, it, and get paid for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to, like, everything that I do, I do, most of the things that I do, I do generally get compensated. But I want to, you know, like, be able to take care of my family and stuff like that more, like, more realistically. Because I think that's a part of the, the industry that's not highlighted a lot, where they see us doing all these things and we're really not getting what we some of us should deserve and I don't there's like probably like a little area with that but I want to get paid for stuff and I want to be like happy about what I'm doing but I want to be happy about what I'm doing before I get paid you see what I'm saying like I want to just instantly and then just select people to help bring this vision together I just want to you know what I'm saying I don't really need to be famous for that like but I want it to be that you can learn things from what I'm doing and then like it helps you and as long as it's moving people in a positive direction for themselves, that's what I want like all of my projects to look like. It's like, yeah, yeah this is something that Tech Life did. This is this is great. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Make you feel good. And sometimes make you feel sad, but it moves you to learn about something. You know what I mean? Like everything right. is not all sunshines and rain- rainbows, but like, how can you make this dark cloud look good, man? Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you go to a uh, school, film school for this? Uh, or are you, I'm a YouTube and just life. <laughs> YouTube university. <laughs> YouTube no. university or just life experience. Like, how did you get into the film industry? Got into the film industry. Well, the, the backstory is my mom threw a disposable camera in my hand when I was a kid and told me to go take pictures of things that like spoke to me or whatever. So at that time it was landscapes, but then that, uh, turned into actually filming people doing things or people with landscapes and stuff like that. Film, how did I get connected into film? Watching them a lot as a child. I would watch uh, tons of documentaries, but I just didn't know that that's what they were called. I just knew people's lives were being told about like uh, who they were as a child. And then you kind of just followed them through their life to a certain point. And then film, like separate, like just like a movie versus a documentary, uh, one of my favorite films is Twister. It had Bill Paxton in it, 1996. I know um, that movie well. <laughs> yeah, a movie about storm chasing. And I used to want to be a meteorologist at one point. So that kind of, they had an amazing ability to tell the story behind the lives of people that chase storms, not just them chasing the storm, but that person as a person. So that spoke to the documentative side. And then the film aspect spoke to the, what the whole film was about. Storm chasing, but then like family mixed with travel and all those kinds of things. So like I went to school, Alabama a University. I majored in uh, communications with a concentration in production in TV and film. And I minored in like, well, the minor is not important. We're going to move past that. But yeah, so the, yeah. So technically, yes, I did go to school. I didn't go to film school, but we had like a film program where it was, where it was like detailed around giving you a good start. And then if you wanted to go back to school for film school after that, you could. I just wasn't one of those people. I just pretty much went straight to work after school. I was working during school, but. I I feel like now is really just figuring out how to get on set. And once you get on. That's it. That's that's it. Like, I feel like. Just get on a set, meet a a couple of people and be willing to sleep on people's couches and stuff if they let you. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. Because that's the that's the other side of it. You know, it'll it'll test you to see how bad you really want to do certain projects like, you know. I, it, there's many of uh times I stayed at a friend's house and my I was like I got my blow up in, in my trunk. Uh, yeah, like where can I set it up? Keep and, that stuff, man. Like 
And I stayed in that. I think I did that. That's the one I did, uh, Trading Spaces, that okay. show. And I was two weeks. Uh, we did four episodes. And I was like, let's go. No, we did three episodes. And I was like, let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. ready." What's your favorite project to work on? Like, what do you what do you want to work on? Like film wise? And what position do you want to play? Like, do you want to direct? Do you want to edit? You know, like, what do you want? What would you want to do? That's such a hard question. I I know. I know. I want to do it all. Like, I love like set dressing. I love set dressing. Um, I did that for uh, uh, Trading Spaces. I was a, a, a design assistant, which right. was great. I got to go thrift shopping and stuff and finding things. It was wonderful. Ikea all day. I was like, this is, I'm getting paid to shop. What? That Ikea. Was, Ikea. And so um, I love that. Um, I've also, I love to edit too. I'm a video editor. So I like to edit. And I've watched um, a YouTuber I follow. She does, I don't know if you know the Try Guys, but um, one of their editors, she has her own channel and she showed how they do the the editing for like one of their segments. And it was just, it's so much because they have so many cameras and I've never edited on that type of scale. So I would like to like see how that is and editing that. I'm used to editing like, you know, stuff we film for like, I was working for a school district. Right. So we were filming like interviews and one scene at a time, basically. Yeah. So it wasn't a lot that we now we got creative if we had time to. Ooh. But um, and then also I've gotten into um more being more like creative, like creative director, like kind of like right. you know, seeing what I want in camera. So maybe a little directing too. So those feel- are my main three that I wouldn't mind doing, like set dressing, of course, um directing, and you know, just maybe even being in front of the camera. Who knows? As long as I can act crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean that's you want to be, yeah, like, I, I actually, like, I act, I like to act, too. I didn't, I forgot to put that on there. Act, and I've been in a few plays. I actually recently scored a role in this. It's a table, a live stage read. It's going to be, like, in March of this year. Okay. Uh, so I played this role of an old man. Uh, his name was Tuna Johnson. Wow. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I did That's that. That's real country. Oh, uh, bro, it was, and I, I really <laughs> on my turn the country down. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I, I channeled my inner granddaddy on that one. So okay. like the show. This is and, your granddaddy. This is your granddaddy, bro. That's for real, man. I yeah, I did that. I, but I was in the play 10 years ago and they're revamping it. And so they called oh. me back to join to rejoin it. So I'm looking forward to that. They sent me the script the other day. I'm gonna start reading it um now, like soon. So I can okay. get back into it, see if I still got it or not. So yeah. That's fun. Yeah. I just I wanna I I at least want to try every aspect of film positions yeah. just to see what I really truly like because even producing is another one okay. um I was taking um you know master class I don't know if you've seen that and Shonda Rhimes is on there and she I was taking her master class of you know how she does, started do you think that really helps like this master class is it like class or is it more like a a video lecture more like what's what, it's uh, more like a video lecture but you do get um she does have you uh um a pdfs and stuff like okay s- scripts from gray's anatomy that she worked on and stuff like that so they do have it's kind of like i don't know if you ever watched a uh, um oh what is that creative live yeah i have a i have a program a profile for it yeah me too of, I've, uh, <laughs> i watched it techniques and stuff like that yeah i watched that uh when i finished uh film school and i was like well, damn, I could have saved some money and just watched this show. But anyway, that's a whole that's other thing. That's kind of how I felt when I finished college. Like, I was like, so what was I here for again? Like, yeah. I mean, granted, I gotten jobs from some of my right. teachers that were there. So I'm grateful for that. And, you know, full sail, I, I can still go there and get career advice. And they really? said, job. 
Yeah, and they still I can go on the website and look at jobs and stuff. So that's, that's dope. yeah, that's one good thing about full sale. Like they you can have your guidance counselor to the very end. They will still keep up with you. They still have stuff. Um during the pandemic, they had Zoom meetings for people to have a meet and greet and meet people from different walks of life. And I met some people from on there um that do film from like New Zealand and stuff like that so yeah so they still do stuff for alumni so that's the good thing about going to that film school which I'm grateful about um yeah it's all about relationships that's the that's the big thing um you have to make sure your relationships are like intact and Mm -hmm. call people back and you gotta keep that stuff going after the production is over because like they you can easily be kind of blown off in the wind if you're not careful yeah unless unless you just don't want to do it anymore which is respectable but right you are impressionable like people will remember you and stuff like that and call you back that's the goal like the goal is to be memorable in a positive manner to where they're like yeah we got to call this guy back but then sometimes you gotta the tough parts about film are like living in in a weird region where you're undiscovered because literally it's just because of where you're placed like you know being in Bama there's not a lot going on here but if you try if you drive two and a half hours e- uh, east to Atlanta then then you just put yourself in a different realm because there's so many productions going on over there that you can kind of just jump on some stuff and so I got to challenge myself to do that more. I'm, I get real complacent about doing my own thing. And that's that's me. Like, I'm hard-headed like that. But shoot, I must like it because I keep doing it to myself. So Obviously, you like it because you're still doing it. And, right. you know, and it brings you some type of joy. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't enjoy it. Facts. <laughs> exactly. Like, I would, yeah, like. I can do anything for money because like I've, I've worked just about every kind of job. Like I've been, I worked in a factory. I've worked in retail. I technically I've worked in food. Um, I've done a lot of stuff, man. Like I like to do stuff that's hands on though. Like I don't really like being cash register is cool to, to it's like, but it's like, you want to, you always want to cross train and whatever you're doing. Like what you mm-hmm. said, you want to learn every aspect of film. I can't say that that's the same for me. I know that I would handpick what what you're saying is I would handpick things. So for me, it would be like camera department, but I'd be cool being a camera PA uh, or camera department PA. That's two different things. So the camera PA might be specific to just one camera operator, but then that's technically like an AC, but you just got to make sure that you have your, make sure that you get those credentials on the call sheet. So it counts for your, hours or whatever towards like if you want to jump in the union or just be recognized as being a good ac for somebody because if you can assist well then you'll you'll be shooting before you know it yeah and i've done that too and i enjoyed that i did um i think it was for a food truck race for uh food network duh yeah And, and they came to daytona and i got to work with them and i was uh, PA for the camera department which was so much fun the guys were great like yeah. and of course I'm the only woman <laughs> hey that's even better though that means they really rock with you you know and it was just I, and I was the only black woman as well too of course and so it that's was, what I was just, saying. yeah and so it was great and then we had this one shot that I love that you know how they when the the trucks are driving and you get the tire um so the, I'm driving a van and he was like all right I'm gonna unlock the door and get this shot of the van <laughs> of the truck while it's moving and I'm like oh my god right now like oh so I'm just like oh my god like we're on a live street filming the truck driving to the next location and he's hanging out like with the camera and we're on the road and I'm like he's like okay slow down all right speed up all right now slow down so I can get the back of it all right and I, did, and I was like okay and were you, was, were you on walkie or did he have was he just yelling this stuff no he was it was in a van so he was right there oh, he so was I'm right sitting, there okay he was right there so I'm like okay okay and I'm trying to check make sure that we're not blocking traffic bruh yeah I got to do something like that on the one week the, the thing we just did 
I got to do that. Oh, that that's was, awesome. It was, like, it was so much fun. Like, it was interesting. Creating live B-roll. Yes, it was so much fun. I'm like, oh, I love this. And I was like, I get to, I'm in Fast and Furious. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> pow, pow. It was so, it was like, that was a highlight because it was so much fun because he's just like, all right. And he, and then when I watch it back, I was like, look at what we did. Yeah, I was looking forward to see like what, what comes of what we, what we just recently worked on. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know when it's supposed to release. They haven't, I mean, I guess they don't tell people like that, but. I'm sure they'll let us know so we can promote it probably. Because I want, yeah, I want to check it out. I've yet to post anything about me doing it. Like, like that nobody nobody knew that I was doing it. For I real. haven't really posted anything either. I think I posted when we had our rap party, and okay. you you wouldn't even tell anyway. It's just me with some so people. like people you would yeah you with some folks. <laughs> I could, yeah, because everybody else like did good about posting uh, in a, in the little the little chat the private mm-hmm. chat thing like they did good with that. And I was like, man, I gotta get in more of these photos, man, because I was just so locked in like yeah i was just really focused on cr- trying to create something like that's how i do my stuff like i get real locked in on my shit and so i just got zoned in and forgot about the outside world except for when i'd be like off if we get like a day because it's mm-hmm. it's pretty grueling man like six six days one off that's pretty rough 12 hours a day it ain't no man. it ain't no hoe man like you gotta love it or you know at least halfway like it because yeah. if not it'll just it, it, it'll make you or break you so many people would left you know what i mean like i know <laughs> like they either left or got fired or like i come crazy. back like i went to uh disney to work for run disney and i come back and i'm like well where everybody, did, where everybody go who are these new people I'm like, you know he got fired so then like these five people got hired in his place <laughs> like what I'm like yeah bro like it's I, it's that is crazy but one thing that my teacher has always told me in film school is like you you're representing if you went to film school because if you have it on there you're representing that school you're also representing yourself that's right so you have to have a uh, set etiquette like even if you can't stay of what you're doing never look like you don't and never speak it on set you have who to told be- you that my, I don't remember what teacher told me that, but no, nah, we need to know her name. No, nah, I was playing. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, you're right though. That's true. Like never. Uh, I ain't gonna say that you can't never say you don't know how to do something. I just, but, I'm not, no, I'm saying like, don't say you don't like what you're doing. Oh, uh, voicing that on set, like you know, you're a PA. Oh, go buy some trash but and they always have me going back to you know what i'm saying just complaining because i've had people on set yeah very verbal and i'm like dude I've, just like I've seen them get your money and this easy work like just get oh bro yeah i already know like <laughs> like I, <laughs> talk yeah. about this later we talk about this offset but just do your job and just get it done and you might move up some to somewhere else. Don't like mess True. up what you're doing now. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just me. No, nah, yeah, that's that's me too. Like I was one of those people that was like, okay, I would complain like offset to like family and friends that would mm-hmm. listen and shit like that. Or like if we would get up and be like, man, you know, like just talking right. whatever. But it's like that helps to have a good support system. Mm-hmm in this world because you're literally trying to make your living uh but then at the same time you're not really focused on the money as much as so you are the project so that way the project comes out very well polished but the stuff that happens you just be surprised (laughs) bro like like how people really are versus what they present professionally right Yeah. yeah I got some stories, but you know. <laughs> that's a whole nother episode. We'll yeah. have we'll have set stories, okay? That's a good. I, I'm down. Okay. <laughs> let me in. Just let me know when, so I can figure out when to take off work. So yeah, I need I need to be a part of that because oh, y'all because got a story to tell. I mean, being in this industry, like I had, I want here's here's one thing I want to do eventually. I want to actually make a musical about oh, okay. um I it was going to be like news because that's where I first started was okay. in news and I would love to make like 
a musical. Um, a musical about being on the news? About uh, work, working, working, in, the news. working in production or just news period? About working in the behind the scenes. Because you know, because you ever watch like a show, uh, they show the behind the scenes of them doing a film and you're like, that's not what really happens. <laughs> you know, like you watch certain things, like that's not what we do. Like when I watch uh, certain uh, news shows and I'm like, the they must got money because that's not what we do with these local ones that we stay. <laughs> like, right. That's not what we did at my certain place. Certain movements and shot concepts. You like this ain't the news. Like you used to the news being like somebody like in the middle of the screen, like kind of like how I am right now, like yeah. middle of the screen, like no third, but just like and then no set for real behind them, just at the school brick, right? Nothing and nothing. They'd be like, yeah, you know, I saw Darnell and them running, and I I couldn't believe it. But it's like you can at least set it up, and then it would have been more believable by the way you built your shot out instead of you know just throwing somebody on the camera. Yeah, so I eventually want to make a a, a a musical during that, and then I want to do like um a mockery documentary of what we go through, but experiences that we are and like people from the industry have gone through like yeah. have that on set and make that happen through film but make it a mockery a fun a fun mockery not like really serious like you know kind of like um what's what's top not top no what's the one that they always make fun of movies rent no musicals oh my bad i was thinking musicals that people make fun of no it's it's a big one it's it's, anyway but you know you feel what i'm saying it's not to take i don't want the show to be serious i want us to know that we're making fun of the industry and have fun with it you feel what i'm saying make plenty of sense yeah so that's eventually what i want to do but i've never like what um, do you feel like is holding you back from starting that process the writing okay so do you would you want somebody to co-write it with you or you want to be the sole writer for it? No, because I feel like if it was just up to me, it would never get done. Ah. <laughs> because I'll be like... I feel you on that. Because you know how is when it's something of yours, like I've written a script before, which um, I loved it, but I kept going back and back and I'm like, oh, it's not good enough. And then I keep uh, rereading it. and re- You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like... Yeah, you gotta let people read it, man. And just, no, I did. That. Oh, and I they... Did. They wouldn't like it. No, they liked it, but they was they were like, "Well, you could change this," and I'm like, "Oh, okay." So now I got to go back, and then I'm like, "Well, is it too long? But where do I stop? Like, what would make a good ending? Like, it's just I okay. need I, I, I would rather have a collaboration with somebody Same. for something like that because if I just leave it to myself, then oh, all hell will break loose, <laughs> and I would never get it done. <laughs> And I'll be like, it's not good enough. I can't do this. And nah, I will psych man. myself out. Nah, you can do it. I There's, can. You but got I need it. help. I mean, I'm here right now. So <laughs> I'm, I, now I'm, I'll be straight up. I'm not a huge fan of musicals at all, but I would be interested in working on one because maybe that would change my perspective on mm-hmm. how I really thought about them. And that yeah, kind of yeah. ties into what you said about doing every aspect of film, like for that's your standpoint. Like, you know, I want to work every cross train myself, basically. Yeah. And so, um, but being a PA will do that. Like you'll literally end up working in every department and then the departments will choose you based mm-hmm. on how they felt when you were around, around them, all that kind of stuff. It's like, it's all relationship based stuff for real, for real. They just dress it up with business esque and, right. you know, you make you feel, try to make you to feel a certain kind of way and all that. But it's like, nah, bro, just get out there and do you. Like, get out there and be yourself. Because I feel like if you would have been on with us longer, you would have ended up being a PC or something like that. Because you have, you definitely have coordination skills and they're yeah, good. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I didn't worry about anything when you were on set. <laughs> Dead ass. I was just like, oh, Rick here, we straight. I was, like, I was like, I know it's gonna be a good day. I'm good. Like, I appreciate you, man. Like, gosh. for real, because you, hey, man, you help me out a lot too. Like, you, I ain't gonna call nobody else name because they government name out there. But oh yeah, no, yeah, you know. But a lot of people really helped out, and that's Back. the one thing I, I appreciate about being on the set. Like, we were like, we all like communicated with each other. Like, 
you know, when somebody was upset, I knew I'm like, all right, man, just just go take a break for a second. Yeah, I, like I'll cover for else. you. Yeah, I'll cover for you for a few minutes. Just take a breather and you know, go vent over the air. And Ain't nothing so, like running to the store when you have to do a store run for the crew or something. It's like, yeah, can you do this? That way you can just get away. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, oh man, thank you so much. It's like, yeah, you good. I can see it all on you, bro. Like, just yep. go away. Take 30 to do what you got to do and come unofficially take 30 and do what you yeah. got to do to come back. And and then that <laughs> way I can just say you're on a run instead of it being like, oh, I don't know where he is. And then that making right. more issues. Like, right. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's one thing people don't understand. Like, it's a lot of work. It really is. To work this this industry and hours and tiredness and you do it because you love it so much and you mm-hmm. love doing what you do but yes it's very tiring and it's not uh you know it's not if a lot of people say well you know you got to get your jobs when you get your jobs and it's not always going to happen for you and I'm like I know that but that's the risk I take because if I get a regular job I'm not going to like it oh. That's kind of how I feel. That's always a plight for me because I go back and forth. I come from working regular schmegular jobs Mm -hmm. and then you learn that you can actually make money off of something you like doing. But then the, the, I guess like the cross up or the almost could be negative part of that is the valleys of that job. So like peaks are you got weddings back to back commercials back to back Mm -hmm. and and they're literally coming like you're attracting them at this point where people are they're wanting your expertise but when the valleys come like COVID and now everybody got to do it this way you got to get tested every 10 minutes before you can walk to different parts of the set or Mm -hmm. or just not even getting work fast enough to pay your bills and stuff like that that's where it's like it's really going to be it's going to test you to see if you how bad do you love it like that's the part about it that gets me like Ugh. but if you can just hold on you know what i'm saying you can you can make it happen for yourself it just takes a little bit of determination planning and keeping your eyes open man you know being available yeah. availability is, is a big one too like you got it's that and that's tricky too because that one that we was on it required me to reschedule like 70% of my schedule. Mm-hmm. That was hard. But yeah. fortunately, I have the people, like my clients and the folks that want to work with me. I don't know. They we, we got a good understanding of relationship and values and stuff like that. And it worked out. But any other time, might not have went that way. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. You yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would like to thank you for being on my show. It was a good time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you. And we're going to have to come back and um, with set talk. Uh, with set, I don't even know what I just called it. Tales so of the set. Uh, what was it? Set? I don't know. We <laughs> I don't gotta know. Be, we're going to plan that one out, though. That's going to be dope. Yeah. We're going to yeah. we're gonna have to build that one out. That, look, we might need to make it a mini so like uh, actually shoot it. Huh? I'm what? down, bro. What? Like I'm, I'm pulling up to the bottom. <laughs> Tales of set life, okay. Tales of set life. <laughs> For real, that, that, that's gonna be yeah. Because I'm sure you have stories, and I'm sure other people we know have stories of things that happen on set, and I would love to hear it. I'm gonna do better about writing them down in my journal or something. Because yeah. I bet I just remember stuff of how it affected me. But for sure, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> all right so tell the people where they can find you and when are you coming out with a new episode of your podcast sir okay challenge accepted um you can you can follow and find me at uh tag life productions is, is ig so that's um at tag life uh t-a-c-l-i-f-e productions that's on ig um i have a facebook page as well it's basically like facebook.com slash tag life productions and we have previews of things that we've done there work there so to speak and i have a vimeo page as well but the vimeo is in the link is a link on our instagram page you can just click it and go to it and check out stuff we got there um as for the podcast that's the lemon water chronicles podcast um that the next episode is coming out i would say like in the next couple months 
So it's probably going to be like a mega, a mega drop thing where it's like two or three episodes put not, not all on one stream, but you know, like back to back to back. And I may take a break from it for a while to kind of like reassess and re- figure out how we're going to reapproach that. But 2023 looks good for it. We do have some stuff, some people that we've already got booked for a couple of shows to be recorded. So that's going to be hard. That's going to be hot too. So awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you're going to get back into your podcasting. Because <laughs> once you like stop for a little while, you like, oh, okay. well, it's hard to come back. Yeah. Yeah. I it's know. It's real hard to come back. That's how it is with film too. Like if you don't work for like a month, but you put your money, you save your money well, and you're okay. It's tough coming back, man, because you're dealing with those personalities all over again and, and new people that you didn't know about that might suck or be awesome. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get until you, you get there. And that's the crazy thing about being in film. You just don't know. Even day to day, if you even know the people, they might change that part. in the middle of it. So you never know. So right, I, it's fun and also stressful and also educational absolutely all those things in one Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no arguments so thank you so much for being on my show i really appreciate you thank you and you know anytime you want to come back on this podcast become a dot 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 podcast or you know my other podcast thick girl thoughts um you're more than welcome i come back tomorrow uh, no. Okay, all, right. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for listening, for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, becoming a dot 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 podcast is on my YouTube page, Ricky Edits Life Media. Um, that's everywhere on Instagram, on TikTok, on Snapchat, on Facebook. I am there, Ricky Edits Life Media, R I C K I. And then, of course, Thick Girl Thoughts is my other podcast. And that's more, you know, off the cuff, random, fun things that we talk about. And that is on YouTube as well, Thick Girl Thoughts. And uh, Instagram is R-E-L-M podcast, R-E-L-M dot podcast. And that w- that is where I host We Coming and Thick Girl Thoughts together all in one sexy little podcast uh instagram i don't know I, I don't even know what i'm saying anymore anyway <laughs> all on one plate oh all, all 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 you can eat i don't like know a buffet it is it, right, why am i getting in this voice anyway <laughs> my country voice all right y'all uh <laughs> anyway thank you guys for listening we will talk to you next time as always be you be wonderful be the light in someone's world and just keep swimming. Okay. All right.